The chair will now recognize the gentlewoman from Georgia, Ms. McBath, for five minutes. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. On Black Friday, 10 years ago, my son Jordan was murdered at a gas station in Jacksonville, Florida, because the man simply didn't like the loud music that he and his friends were playing in their car. He called them gangbangers and thugs. Within three and a half minutes, he pulled out a gun from the glove compartment of his car, took a shooter's stance, and fired 10 rounds at the car, hitting my son Jordan three times, killing my only son. A month later, a man who should never have had access to an assault weapon murdered 20 children and six staff at Sandy Hook Elementary School. The love that a parent has for our children is different. It's unique in that our love for everyone else has a beginning, but for our children, our love has no end. When your child is born, it's hard to understand how you're capable of feeling so much love. It's, it's a love so precious and pure that it flows through your soul. And as they grow, your love grows with them. Each day, you can't imagine loving them more, and yet every day you're proven wrong. Oftentimes, we feel vulnerable with this love and all the fear that comes with it. Being a parent is like that. If everything goes right, if we do everything we can for our children, the very worst can still happen. Principal Dawn Huxprung and psychologist Mary Sherlock yelled to their colleagues, Shooter, stay put, when they investigated the first shots. They were the first killed as they alerted the others. Janitor Rick Thorne ran through the hallways alerting classrooms of the danger. He used his master key to lock many of the doors for them. The key was so worn from use that it snapped in one of the doors. The first graders in Lauren Rousseau's classroom were not allowed to grow. Lauren had worked at Sandy Hook for a week. She had tried to hide them in the bathroom. She had fought to keep them safe. Fifteen of her students were killed. Fifteen first graders murdered in a bathroom by a man with an assault rifle. One, a six-year-old girl, played dead among the bodies of her classmates. She was the only one to survive in that room. Covered in blood, the first thing she said was, Mommy, I'm okay, but all my friends are dead. The next room the killer entered was that of Victoria Soto, who did her best to conceal her students in a closet. Some were hiding under desks. As the gunman fired at them with his Bushmaster, he stopped to reload. Six-year-old Jesse Lewis shouted at his classmates to run for safety, and several did. Jesse was looking directly at the shooter when he was murdered. Anne Marie Murphy, a special education teacher, was found shielding six-year-old Dylan Hockley. The bullets took them both. Victoria's sister Jillian was captured by photographers in what some call the defining photo of that horrific day. She is forever immortalized on the phone, sobbing, receiving that devastating phone call. The call that is a sucker punch to your stomach. The call that brings you to your knees when your desperation just simply will not let you stand. That leaves you gasping for air when the agony will not let you breathe. A decade ago, my child was murdered. The very last day I saw my son Jordan, he was wearing red sneakers. He had khaki-colored slacks on and a black backpack slung over his shoulder as he walked out the door. He said, I love you, Mom, before he got on the plane to Jacksonville, Florida. Jordan talked about coming home for Thanksgiving, and that day still haunts me. In Newtown, parents watched their children walk out of the front door and some never saw them again. We are left only with the memories of our loved ones and the lost dreams of what could have been. Parents may move forward, but never fully heal. They never fully recover. In honor of their legacy, it's imperative we continue to fight for life-saving policies such as universal background checks, safe storage, ghost gun regulation and assault weapons ban, and so, so much more. In the words of a well-known writer, I quote, to value life of others is to acknowledge the sanctity of yours. 
To feel for the ruin of others is to respect the existence of yours. To fight for the freedom of others is to preserve the liberty, liberty of yours. And I yield back.